Okay, so welcome to this InfoShare, to the GEO InfoShare uh, uh, that will uh, discuss uh, about, once again, about quantum key distribution and especially about uh, simulation on testbed uh, today. You see my screen? Yes, yeah? yes, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go. Okay, so uh, just, uh, I will make a, a brief introduction before we, we start uh, uh, the presentation. Uh, in the network technology service development uh, work package, we our approach of this uh, of this quantum task is this quantum uh, general uh, technology is first to to make uh, the the, the NRN engineers more uh, aware about what is it because it's a really new technology that require uh, not simply um, uh, dealing with new technology because uh, NREN engineers are really uh, familiar with having new protocol and things like this. Here, yes, there is a really a new logic and so on. So, the first work, what first task that we focus on is on the dissemination. So, you have already seen two, maybe seen two info share, or you can look it, uh, at it into on the Geant TV YouTube, where the first one was really presenting the quantum principle. The second one, what was what was quantum key distribution, uh, which is the, the the first use case uh, that would be potentially uh, implemented uh, for real uh, in our network. And there was also a white paper that you can uh, that you can uh, uh, look at if you would be uh, interested. We put all the information that we get into a wiki, so there you have the address of the wiki. And regarding also uh, making uh, the, the European engineer more quantum aware, we we really thinking about uh, what which type of, of training could be interested to to set up. But uh, it's still uh, it's still not uh, it is something that we are thinking about. Uh, we also focus on technology, uh, so there is a collaboration with a research project on industry, and you will see. This and there will there was also uh, uh, and it is the, the the purpose of this uh, of this uh, info share about how to, to to create a test bed. So there was simulation test bed that was created and also a physical test bed that will be that has been uh, uh, set up and that will be presented to you next Friday. And uh, also, of course, we explore a, a potential solution uh, for Géant and. Uh, uh, we we plan originally to, to present you a, a project uh, from Giant uh, from Giant team uh, about a, a proof of concept a bit of uh, quantum key distribution between two Giant pop today, but unfortunately uh, our speaker is here, so we will make a presentation uh, of this on Friday. Uh, it will be certainly not the speaker because it will not be. Uh, has recovered from this, or maybe he will not be available, but you will see this presentation on next Friday. So if you here, you, you can see uh, two uh, email lists uh, that you can use if you want to uh, contact us, and you can also see the number of, uh, of our group, uh, especially Piotr Ridlochowski, who is uh, our technical leader of, of these groups. What we have seen uh, in the during this uh, during this work is that a lot of NRENs uh, really need to um, get some information and share some information about quantum project in general on on quantum on QCAD, but uh, are not uh, uh, already um, in position to work on the technical implementation of QCAD. So what we have started is a, a kind of a, an open group, uh, an open group meeting where uh, each uh, Friday of the first of the month, you can join the group and we exchange uh, about different information that we have collected, uh, any presentation, any uh, new article, documentation, and also uh, uh, we make an update of our project. So it's a really short call where everyone is exchanging different information about standardization and so on. So if you would be interested, uh, do not hesitate to join this group. Uh, the, the, the email list is quantumdiscuss uh, at the list, uh, 
www.geon.org. Uh, okay, so if you would like to ask some question, you know already how we process, uh, you can use the, the Zoom chat. And uh, there will be some uh, question uh, answer session at the end of the, uh, I would say uh, time at the end of each session. So you, you have the chance to, to ask uh, our uh, presenters uh, any questions. So what, this week we have uh, organized two info share. Uh, the first one is this one, which is mainly focusing on the simulators and how you can simulate uh, a quantum device and so on. Not only quantum device only for QKD, but a quantum device for quantum communication in general. And uh, the next one is uh, on Friday and is the counterpart, I would say. It's the, the instead of having, having a simulation testbed, you, you would have a, a physical implementation and a physical testbed that would be presented next Friday. And uh, <clears throat> beyond this, there will be also a presentation uh, from Andres from the uh, University of Malta. Uh, about uh, European quantum communication infrastructures, uh, the call that uh, uh, will be uh, launched by, uh, by the European Commission. Yes, so what we will see today is two sessions. Uh, the first one is a session uh, dedicated to the first simulator, which is called QKD NetSIM. And uh, with a presentation and after a demonstration, and after we will have a short break, and after that uh, there will be a presentation about QSP uh, will be presented by Piotr uh, on uh, and, uh, and so far in the same model with presentation. And I don't see uh, Dr. Michael uh, right now connected, so we will uh, inter. Uh, we, it will be Piotr who will start. <laughs> Thank you, Piotr. No, <laughs> Sorry no, for no, uh, ah, ah yeah. Mirad, you are there. Oh, thank I, you very I'm much. I'm sorry, Mira, Miralem is here. Yeah. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Miralem. I just saw that you connected, so we can start from you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I will make a brief introduction of Mirael. Uh, in the meantime, you can uh, you can uh, start sharing your screen, Mirael, if you want. Okay. Thank you. Yes, so Dr. Mireille Merrick uh, is graduated from uh, the Faculty of Electrical Engineering uh, from uh, ETF University of Sarajevo, Bosnia and uh, Herzegovina in uh, 2010. Uh, he holds a master degree of telecommunication from uh, the same faculty. Uh, he is a PhD from VSB Technical University of Ostrava in Czech Republic. Mireille received uh, the best paper award from ETF E Travel E Conference uh, MCSS uh, 2017 in Krakow and received the second place for his dissertation using quantum key distribution for securing real time application in the category information technology in a competition with the consortium of universities. He is involved in Origin 2020 Open QKD project and the main contributor to the QKD network simulator which is going to present today. Mirael, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. You can start, Mirael. Well, initially I'm coming from University of Sarajevo and cooperating a lot with the VHP Technical University of um, Ostrava. I hope you can see my screen. I hope that you see my slides. Can someone just confirm? Yes, yes, yes. You, you, we can see okay. your screen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, so today's topic is about the QKD network simulator. And uh, in short, we call that QKD um, NetSIM, QKD Quantum Key Distribution Network Simulator. So when all this started and how it works, I'm going to try to explain you today. Um, in general, um, it is a model, and that's why we call it quantum keys distribution network model that is uh, developed under the NS3 development network management system. 
Um, you can find the version 1.0 available at uh, qkdnetsim.info. You can freely uh, download it. There is a repair machine. There is a Doxygen documentation. There is an API. There are even several examples. Some of them are CQQC example from the uh, previously de uh, developed QQD network in Europe in 2004. Um, and this, the version 1.0 was developed in 2017 and it was a result of our activities and basically my PhD thesis and uh, activities in the field of uh, quality of service. Me and Professor Miroslav Wozniak, who is a head of department at uh, Telecommunication University of Oshawa. Um, so now we decided to upgrade the simulator since we are participating in the OpenQKD project um, in the horizon uh, in the horizon view. So the version 2.0 and 2.1 are currently under heavy development. Me and my PhD students are working hard to fulfill all the requirements that are put in front of us in, uh, in, in this horizon project. And uh, I will explain shortly how these versions differ and what are their purposes and how they how you can use them and, and what is the main aim. Um, in general, I believe that simulator is a very good uh, playground and a very good place to uh, understand how the networks uh, um, how the networks work and how you can play with them and how you can improve them. So that's the main purpose of the simulator, to, to play, to test, to see whether some of the protocols or solutions that you want to develop are suitable or what are the performances, uh, what can be achievable uh, on your computer pre or before implementing it in the real device. So the QQD network simulator, QQD NetSim is focused on the trusted relay protocol, um, a trusted relay principle of QQD quantum networks. What does it mean? In short, I'm just going to remind you if I believe most of you are familiar about it. I saw some presentations so from Andras Pope and Eleni Dianamti from previous sessions, so I believe you already know this. So the hop by hop principle in quantum networks says that um, the due to limitations of the quantum channel due to attenuation of the optical fibers, and uh, restrictions of the distance that are put on the quantum channel, it means, seems that it's it's not uh, feasible to implement quantum channel over the longer distance. So therefore we implement multiple hops, multiple uh, nodes for reaching these uh, longer distances. So it means that uh, the value that will be, that should be uh, exchanged between node A and D, it will be encrypted on one of these nodes using your key and I'm not going into details which key with performances is going to be be AIS one time pad or different it's going to be encrypted with your keys we see here sort of symbol so it denotes the one time pad then the message is sent to the node B where it's decrypted then we use the again the next key that is shared between nodes B and C to send the message between B and C encrypted again decrypted, encrypted, decrypted, and finally it reached the destination. So this is the trusted relay concept, trusted because you need to have um, trusted nodes in the middle to trust them for this whole communication. The value and the different implementations, it can be the pure message for the exchanging the information, but it can be also the key that is generated using the quantum gear random number generators or other uh, sources of the randomness. So the other simulator is focused on this approach. There are other simulators that are focused on entanglement. They are focused on the quantum channels. They are focused on the quantum phenomena. Our simulator not, we are focused on the usage of key. So basically how to use it, how to exploit. On the right side, you can see the diagrams from our one of our uh, graphs that are produced by the simulator. It shows the amount of uh, buffers of the keys, how many keys have been consumed, how many keys, are uh, still av available in the buffers. I will talk about it in the rest of the slides. So um, why NS3? I said we started with NS3 simulator. Honestly, my personal opinion is that NS3 is to today one of the most popular NS network simulators at the market, open source, open source under heavy development, honestly. So each year we have about three up to four, sometimes even four releases of the simulator with new upgrades. Community is very active, it's open source, you can change it, you can upgrade it. 
Um, the community mailing list of the NS3 is very daily, daily of changing uh, a lot of emails, so you can find a very good support. So we decided to use NS3 because it's very, very widely accepted in academia and in industry and government, and it's also providing us the emulation capacity, so we can even extend it to be the emulate. One of my PhD students is working on this. So to extend the simulate to, do be, to have the emulation capacities. Um, on the right side, um, you see the box of the NS3 simulator, the main, the core box of the NS3 simulator. And our QKD model that we developed is just one piece of all this here. One additional block in the whole sequence of the NS3 simulator. We tried when we developed our simulator, our model for the simulator not to change the core. Uh, because we wanted it to be um, uh, flexible so it can follow the subsequent version of NS3 releases. Uh, so, for example, the current version of NS3 release is 3.35. Uh, next version, 3.36, is in preparation. It's expected until end of the year. Uh, however, NS3 simulator also, uh, it, it seems like perfect playground to be extended with new models, new uh, sections and new functionalities. It's also because it's a simulator. It's not a real device. It's not a real sim, uh, real software practical development. There is a lack of several uh, important features. For example, there is no support of IPsec. There is no support of HTTP protocols. There is no support for MacSec um, and other protocols that you expect to have them implemented. So if you decide to go in this direction, you need to implement them by yourself. And it takes time, as you can expect. So let's go next. What we have developed. Um, QKD NetSim is a unique simulation tool at, to our understanding. And definitely in 2017, when we launched the first version publicly open source on GitHub, it was uh, the unique sim simulation tool that is open source. You can download it, use it re, uh, without any notice. And we are focused on the key usage. So how to use key, not how to generate the key, because we assume that key is going to eventually be generated by the quantum devices, right? So now the question is how to use them, what to do with the key when you eventually generate the key using QKD devices of different manufacturers, vendors, protocols, whatever you decide, BB84, B92, Eckhart, uh, continuous variables, whatever you decide, you somehow then need to use this key. The question is how to use them. So the simulator and this platform should help you to understand how to manage the quantum network with these keys, how to achieve the quality of service, how to integrate the QKD technology with other networking infrastructures, technologies that are already available on the market, like the SDN, Wi-Fi. Should we use IPv6? Should we use multiple routing? Which routing protocol should we use? Where on which layer should we apply it? How to integrate it with the different uh, technologies? And that is the answer why basically we developed this whole simulate. So on the on these graphs, you can see example that we presented in QCrypt conference in 2018 in Shanghai, in China. Uh, the idea of the presentation was comparison of different routing protocols that, well, when we started working in the quality of service in QKD networks, this was the, some of the first results that we uh, that we presented um, discussing which routing protocol should be um, suitable and in which direction in designing the new routing protocol for QKD networks we should go. Yeah. So the simulator provided us a very nice playground to test these functionalities and see what other suitable options. So when you start designing the simulator, um, you ask yourself how you should organize your simulator. Yeah. What are the main components? You Okay, you want to build a simulator, but how to build it, what are the components. Yeah. And you can scratch it by yourself, you can define it by yourself. And um, we did it in 2017 and 2016, we designed our own components. But currently on the market, and as a result of the OpenQKD, there is a, a joint consortium mem, uh, opinion that this is the structure of QKD node that should be implemented. Yeah. It's published in the article and conference, and this is something that the current version, version 2.0 and 2.1 that is following, will follow the whole structure of the QKD now. So I'm just going to, I'd like you to read the article, but I'm going to just explain short, very important um, notes from this, what is presented here. So the node by itself should have a kind 
of uh, first we start from the bottom, they are QQD systems, QQD models that generate the key. They can be of different vendors, different protocols, different types, we don't care. They, they somehow generate the key, right? Then you need to have some QQD control that is going to start to reboot, to restart, to power up, to manage these devices, to man monitor the temperature and other everything performances that are needed. Then you need a forwarding model that's going to be in charge for routing, um, well routing in respect of the cloud, um, in the light of the cloud, your service is very, very important. Um, and on the top, there is a key management component that is the first component when communicating with the applications. Now, what is going to be the application? It can be your application that is developed on the application level of TCP IP, but it can also be the application what is denoted in the SE standards like SEA, uh, SI application, like a secure entity. Um, it can be IPsec, it can be encryptor, it can be MACSEC, everything that consumes the key is assumed as an application, right? So it, application is going to contact the key manager and ask him, okay, I want to have some key and the key manager is going to decide from which QKD system and how to provide you the key. So the key management is this point, access point for providing the key to the outside world, right? This is the structure of QKD now that is widely accepted in Open QKD Consortium. And this is now what we follow in the design of the new QKD simulator. So having this in mind, we designed the QKD NetSim 2.0 structure uh, following this, uh, this structure that was presented and adopted in the OpenQQD consortium. Uh, our structure of 1.0 uh, QQD NetSim is very similar. It's very similar. We designed it with several modifications. However, uh, now with this uh, implemented and uh, adopted structure, we decided to change it. So our QKD simulator follows and implements the following components. So we have something that is QKD key, cause that denotes the key. So eventually when you generate the key from the QKD systems, you have a key. Yeah. And uh, it's important to note in QKD systems that keys are not oriented in streams. They don't come in streams, they come in block. So you have a block of keys. This block of keys is, let's say 100 or 1000 bits of key. Yeah. And these 1000, 100 and 1000 bits of key they have a timestamp when they were generated, they have the identifier, they have the size, they have the metadata, like which device was used when it was generated, uh, which, which epsilon security and additional parameters that are needed. So this QKD key class denotes the key that was generated, the block of the key, it's very important. Then we have a QKD buffer. So you need to store these 1000 bits somewhere, obviously. So we have a QKD buffers that contain these keys uh, in their storages, in buffers, and then subsequently, and you need the key, you can use them from these buffers. Do you have a, we have a post-processing application that imitates the post-processing um, applications that generate the key. Yeah. So I will, I will talk a little bit later. Uh, we have the encryptor, the application, a QKD application implemented that imitates the IPsec, MacSec, anything that consumes the key. So it's an application that consumes the key and it performs the uh, encryption, decryption, authentication and authentication check. It is combined with the QKD application and you can define, for example, how many packets you want to send, how many packets you want to encrypt. Do you want to encrypt every packet, every fifth packet, how often key you want, how often you want to refresh your key and all these uh, parameters. I'm going to demonstrate it later. And then you have a QKD manager uh, that is, as I said, the central entity, central component that communicates with the outside world to provide and respond to the key requirements. You have also the QKD control, the application that control QK devices, power up, power up, reboot, install, deinstall, and all other functionalities. So these are the, the additional graphs, the additional components like the QKD graph, total graphs, uh, management, uh, monitoring, and, and et cetera. But these are the fundamental main components that are important, help us in additional, but these are the core requirements. So I'm going to start shortly to introduce you how you can use and what is the QKD NetSIM, what are the main components displaying on several examples. Um, so 
problem when we, we started designing the QKD simulator, they said, said to us, okay, but which protocol you want to simulate? And it was a tricky question because if you decide you want to simulate VB84, why don't you simulate C continuous variables? If you want to design, uh, simulate something else, why don't you use something else? And then we decided to imitate the post-processing traffic that is generated over the over the quant over the public channels of the QKD link. Why? Because in this way we can um, imitate the post-processing of every protocol. Yeah. So uh, in the recent versions, we implemented even some post-processing functionalities like the sifting or error call error key reconciliation, error key estimation, and privacy amplification and authentication. But Currently in this version, and what I'm showing you here now is that we decided to imitate. And now what we, why do we imitate at all? Because it is shown, and especially when you have the simulator, when you can test it, it is shown that the post-processing traffic can in, uh, provide, especially when it comes to multiple systems that are connected to one node, it can result in a conjunction on the link. Yeah, most, more of them, are communicating, they are generating the key and they are consuming a lot of bandwidth. And then you have a problem because the link is con uh, congested and you cannot use that link ever later subsequently for transmission of encrypted traffic. Yeah. So you consume the, your bandwidth to generate the key, but you don't have enough bandwidth to consume the key. So this provides us the uh, uh, playground to tackle this uh, aspect um, considering the post-processing applications. And this is a graph on the right side showing the uh, comparison of our post-processing applications and AIT post-processing applications, one of the most popular applications for post-processing in the quantum world, AIT R10. We published that in the, in the article describing the simulator. So this is how post-processing works. As I said, it's going to imitate. It's implemented in pong pong, ping pong uh, protocol, very simple, uh, just to imitate the communication. There are additional some sockets for sifting and, and et cetera, but this is the simplified graph showing, for example, Alice and Bob are going to exchange ping pong values, one, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then um, at the end of these counters, based on your specification on the left side, you can see the example C++ code. They are going to generate a new key and they are going to store the key in the buffers and then you have the key, right? And then you can use the key. So this is the simplest application that we could implement and imagine to generate a key without considering uh, additional parameters of the quantum, quantum layer. Yeah. So the most important parameters here are, about, are the length of the key, the size of the key that you generated the key rate, how often you generate a new key, and what, what is the uh, average packet size of these uh, packets that are exchanged between Alice and Bob, I already mentioned the conjunction that they can, res um, they can result from this communication. So let's go next. Um, the keys are generated using the uh, dedicated cells or random numbers, so there is a, no collision with this, but eventually you have a key that you can use. Now, having the key, the keys are stored in QKD buffers. You see here the pink, uh, pink box here, close to the node zero and node two. They denote the QKD buffer. So you store your keys in these QKD buffers. QKD link is a logical link. It's not the physical link in the simulator since we do not simulate the optical connection. Optical connection. So you have the QKD buffer, then you have the LKMS or the local QKD key, um, key management system, local key management system that is, should be implemented for each node. And then you have the application on top on the node zero on node two and that are consuming these keys. So communication between application and LKMS is supported by Etsy 014 specification. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of slides. The communica communication between applications is not specified with the Etsy standards. So we implemented our custom signaling HTTPS REST communication protocol. And then also there are additional nodes in the network that can be in the middle of all communication. This is the simplest version of the simulator, what you can simulate. There is also the work in progress supporting the uh, hierarchical organization to say we have the KMS of the whole domain or the whole network, and then you can manage and you can play the, with the routes and, and different configuration of your network. But this is the simplest version, enough to show, to demonstrate what is what can be achievable with the current version. 
So I'm going to remind you for those that are not familiar with the Etsy 014, how it works, which what are the main uh, functionalities of Etsy 014 protocol. It's based on the REST API, and it is designed to support a communication between KMS and um, QQD applications, right? So uh, this is the left side of the QKD application, Alice. It has its own KMS and it has its own QKD buffer where the keys are stored, right? And then uh, we have the symmetrical uh, also components on the Bob side, on the user B right side. So the QKD application starts, um, it, uh, Etsy 014 protocol implements three functions, most important functions, most, uh, three basically uh, types of messages functions that you can use. One of them is get status. One of them is uh, get key. And the third one is get key with IDS, three messages, that's it. So the first one, Alice application or the IPsec or the encryptor, whatever, is going to ask the KMS, okay, how many keys there are in the buffers that are available for the communication with Bob? Please tell me now. And he's going to provide a response. There are different types and different fields in this response, like the minimum keys, maximum keys, average keys, uh, specification of quality of service, and etc. cetera. Yeah. But the, the simplest version is he asks how many keys are there to reach the Bob side. Um, KMS is going to check that in the QTD buffer, provide a response and send it back to the application. Now, having that answer, the application is going to say, okay, if there are enough keys, I'm going to fetch the key and I'm going to use it for my communication. So give me the key, get key. And the same procedure repeats now having the key. Since the communication um, is, is enough on the Alice side, we have a communication on the Bob side. He says, Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to send to Bob from the QQ, from the Alice to Bob which keys I obtained, their IDs. Each of these blocks are identified with a unique ID. And then the Bob is going to fetch his KMS, communicate with his KMS and say, give me the keys with the same ID. Having these keys, then the, he can have the keys uh, prepared for himself. And then we can use them for the encryption and decryption. It's a symmetrical encryption. so. Everything that is encrypted on one side, it must be decrypted on the same side, on, on the opposite side with the same key, right? And that's the simplest approach and simplest example of Etsy 014. What is important here is that you might already see that uh, application is that uh, deciding when to send get status messages and when to send get key. Yeah, it's up to application when to do that. And also um, the whole functionality and logic depends on the application, how to use and when to generate these messages. And you can find already some security potential uh, questions here. What if application is behaving maliciously? So providing, sending a bunch of these get status or get keys to KMS, but providing eventually even the DOS attack or DDoS attack. So, um, our simulator is console-oriented simulator. It's developed in C++ because NS3 is a C++ simulator with some Python support for bindings. Uh, but to make it more publicly available, we decided to develop the NS3 simulator web interface. It's available on the web page, open QKDEU. You can free, uh, you are free to open to test it. So I'm going to show that in a couple of slides from now. Uh, we implemented the whole system in Docker. There is a continuous integration, continuous development of the web interface, the web page that are connected with our simulator. We have also uh, cloning the code, uh, cloning the source code from the repositories, and all that merging in one Docker instance, and then deploying that to the to the servers where you can easily launch your applications with with several clicks of the on, on the web interface. Yeah. So um, I'm going to show you here the, some examples of the demo. I would invite you all of you, I, I pre pre uh, prepared several, some uh, short example how what are the main parameters that you are uh, interested. But you can open your web page, your web browser and open op uh, and type open dash QTD EU and test it by yourself. Yeah. So here it is. I'm going to put my pins between Ostrov and Sfinob, for example, and uh, Cheshin is the link between uh, Czech Republic and Poland that is currently implemented 75 kilometers between uh, Czech Republic and Poland. It is supported by the OpenQKD consortium. 
So you can put your pins uh, on the positions in maps where you want to have uh, your nodes, where you plan to install them or you want to use them. So the route is calculated based on the minimal distance between these points, markers that you placed. And there you might see these red, uh, these green, uh, sorry, pins here, denoting that every 50 kilometers, there should be one additional trusted, really, trusted repeat. So in reality, it doesn't have to. It depends on the clarity of the optics. It depends on the type of the encrypter uh, of the QKD systems. But in our simulator, we said every 50 kilometers, you are going to have, um, you are going to have a additional trusted relay node. So uh, the link budget calculation for the whole QKD system is uh, taken from um, standards. It's taken basically from uh, vendors of devices. For example, we took the equation for link budget calculation from Toshiba. Uh, while this specification of distances are taken from ID Quantique. For example, we took the specification of uh, Kerberis, um, Kerberis uh, nodes from ID Quantique that are currently mostly available on the market. So having these uh, pins, you choose to specify your simulation details. Yep. On the right side, I'm going to show here, on the right side, the, on the top, there is a Docker indicator that the Docker is launched. You can ready, you are ready to use. So based on the distance of the QQD system, the key rate is calculated automatically. You define how many keys have been, are going to be generated. It, as I said, the block has some size. Uh, you generate um, uh, what is the key rate of generating that's automatically calculated based on the distance. And basically that's are the most important parameters of the QKD system. In the subsequent version, we plan to introduce the QBR specification. So you can also type your own QBR specification. But for now, this equation taken from um, uh, Toshiba is working, as I said already. Now you can specify post-processing packet size. Uh, to test your conjunction over the public channel on, this, uh, on these fields. And you specify the start and stop time uh, when the QKD systems are going to work. Since initially the buffers are empty, you need to generate keys before using them. Otherwise it doesn't make sense to generate keys, to use the keys when, when there are no keys and the buffers are empty. Then you define your end user application, how to use the key. Yeah. So you want to communicate between these two points, A and B, and you want to encrypt the traffic uh, using one time pad, you want to use at one AIS, one to 128, you want to use VEC1 card and authentication, what do you want, how do you want to protect the traffic? Yeah. Then you say some very interesting parameters here. If you choose, um, if you choose AIS lifetime here, you specify AIS, you say, how many data packets are going to be encrypted with the same key. So we didn't use the AIS lifetime in the seconds or in the bytes. We said, uh, let's define the AIS lifetime for simplicity currently in the number of packets that are encrypted. So currently 10 packets denotes that 10 packets will be encrypted with one key. Yeah. So maybe you remember from etc 14 specification from previous slide when I said get key uh, request to the KMS. In this get key request to KMS, you need uh, application need to say uh, how many keys you want. Do you want one key, 10, 100, 1000? How many keys you want? And this parameter is very important. Why? Because as I will show from the results, it specifies the performances of the whole system. Then you define the application traffic rate. So how what is your application? How, how many data you are exchanging? Is it VoIP communication or what is it? So for example, currently we are sending one, uh, 100 kilobits per second. You specify the packet size on the right side, APP packet size in bytes, and you specify start and stop uh, values in the, in the, when the application is going to start to consume these keys. You run the simulations, and then you obtain the results of, the, of, this, of this simulation. So, on the graphs, you can see the green line on this line graph show you that uh, the amount of keys that were generated in this period of simulations. Then you red line the nodes when the keys were generated, when the keys have been consumed. And then on the right side, you have some simple statistics showing you how many keys have been exchanged with the KMS, between the application and KMSs, and between um, applications by itself down uh, messages and also between the application by itself as well. 
And you have the statistics about how many keys have been consumed and how many keys have been generated and eventually how they have been used. So playing with different parameters, you can see that different factors, and I will explain in several examples but from now on, uh, can play different uh, performances of the whole QKD system. So not, it's not important only how, how, how much key you generate, but how to use it. If you do not optimize the, your key usage, it can have a very uh, high impact on your overall performances of the, of the system. Okay, can I switch to the next slide? Okay, so um, one of our implementation details that we decided to implement in the simulator was, um, as I said previously, if there are no available keys and application is behaving maliciously and uh, it might result in DOS attack on the KMS. It's a security question. It's currently considered within the Open QKD Consortium and one special board. Uh, so the application can basically bomb, basically attack the KMS, uh, sending messages like get status, get status, get status, get keys or whatever. And it can result in DOS attack. So to prevent this, KMS needs to have some defensive mechanisms. And one of the mechanisms that we implemented in this version was uh, if the application asks for the key and there are no enough keys for the request, she already obtained this information that there are no keys from the get status message. So she's going to be punished uh, for waiting for three seconds before uh, sending requests again. Yeah. So if they are, she asks and behave maliciously, she's going to be punished for three seconds not to ask again. And then after three seconds, she can start again. So let's see several examples, what we obtained from these parameters, what we obtained from these uh, values. So what's to see what are the results that we achieved with this current version of the simulator, as I said, the other versions and other deployment functions are under heavy development. So. If you go on your simulator in your web browser and you specify the values as are shown here this, in these tables, most of these file parameters are set by default. So we didn't change too many in this specification just to be, um, just to be um, very accurate about the, the demonstration. So the QKD storages are empty on the start. That's very important. So your QKD start system should start at least 10 seconds or a couple of seconds earlier before uh, application starts to consume the key. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to, to use it again. So these are the results. When you compare, for example, uh, usage of different authentication and encryption algorithms. So if I, in this configuration parameters that I defined previously, if I exchange the traffic unencrypted, then I was able to exchange 167 packets. If I use one-time pad encryption, I was able to exchange only 70 packets. And if I was able to use AIS, uh, the, the star signal denotes the number of keys that were, number of uh, packets that were encrypted with the same AIS key, refresh five means uh, five packets were encrypted with the same key. So I was with AIS refresh five, I was able to uh, encrypt 100 and exchange 164 packets refresh 10 and, and, and et cetera. So from here, you can already see that um, the influence of the keys and the refresh per parameter, parameters on the performances that, are, that were achieved. Why? There, there is no big difference in this case if you improve the refresh key rate of your encryptor of your application from, five, from 10 to five. You only lost three packets. Right? You have also the a number of packets that were exchanged from KMS to to, uh, to the application. But if you refresh uh, your key more often, then you are going to com communicate with the KMS more often and ask him, please provide me the new key more often. Yeah. And that can result in a problem. Um, on the right side, you have the number of keys that were consumed. And you see obviously that one time pad is consuming most of the keys because yeah, it needs one, uh, one packet for each packet, one key for each packet to be encrypted. Um, when uh, it Mirel, yes, you, you have five minutes, but if necessary, you can extend a little bit, but just to let you know. Thanks. Thank you. I have three more slides and that's it. So perfectly. Thank for, you. For, Perfect for, timing. For Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that's it uh, for the one-time pad. And from here, you can see how important the performances and the type of cryptographic method and algorithm that you use uh, affecting your overall communication. So 
how and which parameters to use to communicate with, with the encryptors and with KMS by itself. Let's go to the next example that is more and more uh, interesting, even more interesting. It shows you how, um, uh, what happens when the applications increase its key rate, the application rate. So application, for example, is only 10 kilobits per second uh, exchanging between Alice and Bob. So it's not so uh, aggressive. It's not consuming so many keys. It doesn't ask for so many um, packets to be encrypted. And with this one type pad, it can achieve, achieve the performances of 70 packets per uh, but the whole time slot. If we increase the key rate, you can see, for example, that performances of the AIS uh, 10 increases, the number of packets that were exchanged increases. The, diff the reasons is why, and with one time pad, it decreases. The reason is that AIS key is very short. It's only 128 bits, but one time pad, it's a long key, and it takes a lot of time to exchange the packet uh, between the KMS to the application. And especially if the key is even higher than the, larger than the MTU value of the IP, IP fragments, then there is a fragmentation that can follow. And if, if you increase the, include the VMAC key, basically the key that is used for authentication, then the, long, the key is too long. And you, the application needs to wait to fetch the key to, that is provided from the KMS. And then if it is asking too often, it can reduce the performances of the whole system. So this is very important to show, to denote that the, even the performances of the public channel, even the performances of when to ask the key. So currently we implemented one uh, vocal variation of the application stating that um, application is going to have some its own vocal buffer uh, to fetch the key and then to ask for the keys. Why? Because on this way it can uh, um, adopt to the quality of service performances uh, not waiting for the key to be fetched from the KMS, but to have these local reserves internally on local node that can be used for the encryption by itself. So this QQD simulator provides you this kind of testing, this kind of performances. Uh, it currently uh, supports uh, evaluation of communication with KMS entities. It's fully supporting Etsy 014 protocol, and it's currently, we are currently testing and integrating with, with the software-defined networking models. It's in heavy development phase and it will be uh, very soon uh, released. Uh, the next version of QKD NetSIM is uh, planned to include the root specification. So you will be able manually to define where you want to put your KMS, where you want to play, put your nodes and which route to use. And you will have the option to use between, to switch between Etsy 014 and 04. Uh, because Etsy 004 is mostly focused on uh, supporting quality of service and in this initial version, it was not supported. So feel free to test it. It's open um, for testing. You can access the link. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much, Mikhail, uh, for this uh, very nice presentation and for the timing. <laughs> very nice. Okay. Uh, and, and, and also for the really interesting and very very uh, pedagogic uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to, to open the floor if there is some question. I see on the on the chat that there was a question from Manfred that, uh, uh, but Miho Slav has already answered. It was about uh, if there was a only point-to-point -point, uh, simula uh, yeah. link simulation for now, or is there already in QKD kind of point-to-multipoint uh, concept uh, like in networking, uh, like we have in Ethernet or something like this? It's current, uh, just a second. Okay, you can hear me. The microphone is not muted. Yeah, currently the, this version that is publicly available, it's not supporting uh, the whole uh, networking, but it's only supporting point-to-point -point communication, yeah. Currently we are working on the quality of service and supporting developing our own routing protocols. We developed one and it's already published. You can find it in our references. Um, but the publicly available version of the simulator is not supporting this, this, these features. Yeah. It will have very soon, it's planned for the next release within the OpenQQD project. Okay. Uh, there was a comment from, uh, 
from from Noel uh, Varuga. Uh, I, I will read it, but you can read it on on, on the yeah. On the so the question is: Wegman Carter authentication is a scheme that uses key material. In authentic if authentication is enabled, do the simulated post processing packets use authentication key material? Um, yes and no, because the post processing applications. Um, um, not using these keys and the current version for the authentication. Currently, this simulator is mostly focused on the key usage of the um, um, uh, for the encryptors, not for the post processing. So your question is right, but mostly the simulator provides how to use keys for the encryptors, not for the key usage. We know there is a, a usage of the key for the key establishment process, but in this simplified version, it's, it's not used. On a related question to authentication, does a portion of the QKD keys generated go to the authentication key pool? Um, there is no authentication key pool. I think I already respond to that. Uh, currently, post-processing application does not consume uh, any key. Yeah. It's the key is only used for the encryption of the of encryption and authentication of the uh, key for the application purposes. Great, thank you. Uh, is there any other questions? Someone who would like to, you can speak if you want. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Uh, so if there is uh, no other questions, uh, you you mentioned that you will have a new new development uh, soon uh, in your in your slide. So when do you expect that the new version will be? Uh, Available or? Um, well, I cannot promise that. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, well, because the NS3 simulator, it seems to be, it, it, uh, to by my honest belief, it's very suitable for development and new solutions. But uh, each time we find some uh, obstacles because it's a simulator, it's not real software. And then you need, for example, we needed to implement HTTP protocol. It was not implemented. So we need to design the headers, fields, and all the functionalities. Right. So it takes time. Yeah. And if you want to support real IPsec, MACSec, uh, if you want to use MPLS and others, you need to design all of these functionalities from scratch. And then on that, you need to use QKD. So it takes time. Uh, currently, we are focused on Etsy 004. We are very close to finish the first raw version, uh, supporting also the quality of service. It should be, I believe, um, we will have some uh, production version ready maybe until February, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, There is also work on the quality of service on, in the software-defined networks, uh, integrating this simulator with the software-defined networking uh, models. Uh, we are on a very nice track with this, but I believe maybe in the spring, we will have very concrete versions and maybe new version on the OpenQQD web page. Okay, thank you very much. So if there is no other question for, for Mirel, many thanks, thank you very much, Mirel, for, thank you. for this very nice presentation. I will make uh, just an introduction uh, of uh, Piotr. Uh, Piotr is uh, head of the Optical Networking Laboratory, Institute of uh, Bioorganic Chemistry of uh, Polish Academy of Sciences uh, of Boston Supercomputing, Networking Center Research, focusing on optical data transmission technology and electronic, electronic magnetic wave theory on propagation simulations. He is uh, involved in a European QKD project on quantum plexic. Uh, he's also involved in the Polish National Quantum Technology Laboratory. And he is uh, our uh, lead uh, technical uh, subtask leader of uh, our uh, QKD task in uh, WP6 uh, project. Piotr, uh, if you want, you can start your, your presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Xavier, for a kind introduction. I, I think you can hear me well. Yes. Uh, so uh, as, as Xavier kindly uh, 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 mentioned during the introduction today, we, our, our info share is focused on the simulators. Uh, Miral and kindly um, introduced the QTD simulator that is, all, is a huge part of OpenQTD project. But in my presentation, I would like to 
present and give you a little bit more information about the general uh, quantum communication uh, simulation package. So, and particularly the QISP, uh, quantum internet simulation package, because I believe um, it will, uh, it, if you can uh, use it, uh, if you understand how it works, I think it will bring a, a, a very huge benefit to understand how the quantum networks and the quantum, ultimately quantum internet can operate and what are the basic ideas and basic functional elements that still need to be developed or are simply needed to establish and provide the network. So uh, this will be a part of my presentation today. Um, so uh, my presentation will be actually based on the a, a webinar, maybe a workshop that was organized last year on IEEE Quantum Week. Uh, they uh, they had a one day session which was devoted to the QISP. It was presented by Rodney Van Meter and Yosuke Sato from KU University, the, the colleagues that actually developed the, the, the package and the simulator that we can use and it's already a free open 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 package so you can freely use it and 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 try to get familiar with the quantum networks uh, why qisp um, because i i believe that it, it has a friendly interface um, it tries to follow all the recent developments in this area and it will really help to understand uh, what's actually needed in the quantum networks. Uh, but basically, uh, when we say quantum networks, it's uh, I have in mind simply transmitting qubits in the network. So, for example, if you want to this, if we want to distribute or send qubits between the quantum computing infrastructure, we need some kind of network that will allow to send the qubits between the machines. So this is the main difference. In the quantum methods, we do send and distribute the, the qubits. Uh, the package itself um, it can be downloaded and, and you, can, you can verify all the materials from the web pages. So the Q, QISP package, uh, the source code at GitHub. Uh, the, the, the simulator is based on the Omnet uh, uh, environment uh, for simulation. So it is, um, you can say it is an add-on to the Omnet package. Uh, so first you need to download the Omnet package and then you can install and use the QISP uh, elements that are, element, that are developed and, and available in the package. And of course, you can uh, you can see at Mr. Takati Matsuo Master Fees, which is highly uh, recommended because it, it it describes the whole package itself. Um, so, uh, when we talk about the quantum networks, uh, as especially the, also the the class net, net networks, we need to understand that the essential parts to to build the large uh, and and uh, redundant networks, we need to have the repeaters. And in terms of quantum networks, we need uh, quantum repeaters. Uh, so that's why I, I think it's good to uh, say a few words about how the quantum repeaters uh, and especially the entanglement swapping and purification mechanism works. These are elements that are really essential uh, if you want to send the qubits, especially entangled qubits on a, on, a, on a larger distance. Uh, so, but in order to uh, start with this, I think we can uh, just briefly go through and remember and remind ourselves why, uh, what are the issues and we discuss about the networking, especially in the, in the context of quantum network. Uh, so we need to tackle the naming of the nodes in the quantum networks. Also, also the resource management of all the elements that are available in the quantum networks, heterogeneity of the networks, um, 
in terms of the technology resources and all the operations that are, are performed in the network. And also very important element then is that we need to have the mechanism of dealing with out of day information in terms of in, in context of quantum networks, especially this is important when we talk about the entanglement, is it still uh, valid or, or, or the resource can be used or not? And of course, the challenge is the scale of the, of the network. So it is particularly important also in the context of quantum networks. Uh, in a simple word, uh, the quantum repeater uh, is simply um, a device which is using the mechanism that will allow us to make end-to-end -end entanglement. Uh, so that will allow us to uh, distribute and send, maybe not send, but distribute over the link, over the segment, end-to-end uh, -end entanglement between the uh, the, for example, photons. And what is especially for, important, the entanglement will be a heavily consumable uh, resource. So uh, we will really require a lot of this, uh, uh, this, this, this entanglement uh, qubits in the network. It will be really uh, essential element that will be a base of all the other operations. Um, and the quantum repeater will allow us to uh, uh, establish and, and have the base entanglement over a given link that we want to uh, establish. To couple also uh, other entangled links along the path to, uh, to establish end-to-end -end, um, entanglement because we, of course, if we want to establish even longer links, we need uh, to have a multiple uh, repeaters along the link. And of course, the I think the main part is that we need to have the mechanism to monitor and and have the means to to tackle and manage the errors that that unfortunately they do uh, occur on the quantum link, because uh, the quantum states are, of course, not permanent. They do generate. Uh, so we need a, a mechanism that will allow us to, uh, to manage and see the uh, and handle the errors. This is, we can, uh, in this context, we can say this is the same as in the quantum computers. The quantum computers also need uh, a very sophisticated mechanism that allows to handle the errors during the uh, during the execution path and the configuration stage. Uh, and of course, the the last part we need to have the uh, we need to have the possibility to manage the the whole link that is using the quantum repeaters. And if we connect the all the uh, all the repeaters and establish a links, we can have the quantum network, which is ultimately believed to be a quantum internet. Of course, this is still a, a future, uh, but this, uh, this, this, this network will allow us to, um, to connect ac across the heterogeneous networks in the environment with the, uh, with the different nodes uh, between different networks and without the exact knowledge between the elements and of course, we need to have the mechanism that will allow us to detect and presence of the unwanted nodes, the dangerous nodes. Um, so from the functional point of view, uh, if you want to understand how the quantum repeater is, uh, is believed to be working, because this is still an uh, area which is research. So uh, what, I'm, what I will show is only a functional Way not the actual actual hardware implementation. This needs to be uh, remembered. And in general, the QISP uh, is believed to work. This this needs to be remembered that this is that the package is presenting the network from the functional point of view. So we have a uh, given elements that allow us to realize certain functionality, but we do not go into details about the physical implementation. It's something totally different and another research aspect. 
but of course we need to develop two uh, those two elements at both say at, at both times. Um, so if we want to establish a uh, entangled uh, link between station zero and two, and in the mean in the between we need a repeater. We first need to establish an entangled link between station zero and station one and station one and station two. And then using the bell state measurement mechanism, we can um, using the mechanism, which is called entanglement swapping, uh, we can establish an entangled link between station zero and station two. But of course, we need to still remember that we need a lot of operations, uh, logical operations to clear the quantum states. This is why there is a special mechanism, which is called purification. It allows to clear the quantum state and really ensure that we are operating on the, uh, on the elements that we want to operate on. And from the functional point of view, this can be viewed as, uh, as this. So we have a multiple levels of entanglement. So first from station zero to station one, then station one, station two. And then using entanglement swapping in the end, we can achieve the end-to-end -end, um, entanglement between the end nodes that want to send the qubits between the, uh, between the memories. Uh, so as I, as I remembered, as I mentioned, a very important element, uh, similarly as in quantum computing, is the error detection. So in the quantum networks, it is proposed to have um, uh, to have two elements, I would say. Uh, you can use so-called test states, test tool, which allows to um, test the whole link and allow you to set up a rules that really uh, improves the, allows you to understand and have the fully functional end-to-end -end link. Uh, this is called uh, quantum quantum tomography. So you can using known states, you can test the, the segment and based on the results and the purification process, you can establish a set of rules that would that will allow you to establish a communication. Uh, so the QISP is a package which uh, it is a rule-based uh, simulator. So once the rules are established for the uh, the end nodes, you are allowed to do the and establish the communication between the nodes. It is very important step, very complicated because it involves a lot of operations that are connected with quantum mechanics and the quantum communication itself. Uh, but in general, it, it, it is a set of logical operations on the quantum gates that 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 allow you to establish a fully a fully a fully functional rule set. Um, so once we uh, once we uh, allow to uh, to to est allow to establish that we can uh, we can go back to the uh, the set the, the repeater itself. Uh, currently, it is proposed to to have a free generations of the quantum repeater schemes. Uh, depending the the difference is depending on how the errors and where the errors are handled. Uh, but of course, this is still a research aspect, so we need to remember that uh, it is a proposal. But it looks like this is the way to go, and the progress should be established as we as we, as we see. And in the first generation of the the quantum repeaters, we will have the acknowledging layer purification, so the tech area errors. Uh, do the entanglement swapping. In the second generation, uh, generation we would be available also to do the quantum error connection directly on the link. And in the third generation, we would be able to use the unacknowledged link layer and do the quantum correction directly on the links. And of course, you can uh, follow all the all these elements uh, in the articles. I will provide the links at the end of the presentation. Uh, so the QISP package, as I mentioned, was uh, was developed by Matsuo, and you can you can have a look at his uh, master thesis. 
there is a web page where you can uh, download all the elements, uh, watch the tutorials, how to configure it, how to use it. Uh, the license, uh, it's, it was released as open source last year, so uh, it's free, it can be free to, uh, to use and, and simply to learn how learn the basics. Uh, the performance target for the uh, for the for the simulator is that uh, the idea is to implement all three generations of the networks, uh, quantum quantum repeater networks, and have up to hundred networks, hundred nodes per network, and qubits per node. So it will give you uh, more or less one million qubits uh, in one simulation engine. So it, it is a lot. Uh, it call it comes also with a penalty depending on the uh, which is required for the memory. I will just briefly uh, go through this uh, later. Um, and uh, and of course we will need to have the, uh, the quantum error correction manuals also implemented. And also the idea is to have fully uh, complete configurability in the network. So uh, you can you will be allowed to use the, to change the architecture, distance, loss, error rates on a given link. And in each node, uh, in order to perform the logical quantum gates operation, you need, you will have the ability to configure the quantum gates and the memories that are used to uh, store and send the, the qubits, the, uh, the memory sizes, and of course, you will be also able to change the topology and handle the error management through the three generations of the uh, quantum repeaters. Um, there is also a goal to change the traffic scenarios to use different patterns uh, to test different approaches. Um, uh, so, as so as I mentioned, the QISP is a rules uh, rule set based simulator. Uh, so it has a dynamic heterogeneous error model for each uh, for each link between the end nodes, and over the quantum channel, uh, you will need to do uh, certain uh, operations, and also at the end nodes to establish the link and and send the the qubits. And the best, uh, the proposed way uh, for the training in the uh, for the QISP uh, is uh, simply to first uh, get to know with the entanglement swapping and the uh, purification, which is uh, I know it's not easy, but it is really essential to understand before going to the package. Then you can simply. Um, you can install the package according to the, uh, to the uh, tutorials and all the material that can be downloaded from the web page. And, and then once the package is installed, you can simply configure uh, some uh, examples and, and see how the error correction is working. You can define different uh, rule sets. You can define different scenarios in the examples and simply see how the network is, uh, is working. Uh, in terms of the strengths of the, uh, of the package, uh, I would say uh, uh, the main advantage is that it, it, it will allow, probably it will allow to high scalability. Uh, you, you will have the um, internal software structure uh, for, for the nodes, so it will be a, each node can be fully configurable, so you have the access to the uh, to the to the code and and all the elements, and you will be able to configure this uh, on every link on every node. So it is really uh, interesting, but it comes with a penalty. Um, of course, not not all elements uh, from the quantum mechanics are implemented yet. Um, uh, the installation can be difficult, but it, it, it's really essential to follow all these steps that are mentioned in the, on the tutorials. But in my view, the main uh, drawback and the main uh, 
problem is simply the, the learning curve. Uh, so you really need to have a lot of information from the quantum mechanics and the quantum communication background to, uh, to start working with this and have the basic understanding how what is going on in the simulation. And unfortunately, this is something that cannot be easily overcome. So it needs um, introduction and, and, uh, and learning. Uh, the, the package also, apart from the quantum repeaters, they all, it also includes the quantum routers, which is of course needed to route the traffic between different links and different nodes. But as I mentioned, this is only a functional element. So uh, it only shows how from the functional point of view, it can be realized. Um, so the, uh, the mechanism that is used in the simulator, which is, is called quantum recursive network architecture. So uh it allows for the scalability and uh, allows us to change really a lot of elements and it can be also verified in the materials and you can see some simulations in the fields from the uh, how it works in the principles uh also it applies the same for the rule sets that i mentioned earlier so um uh, you can also read a lot regarding the rule sets in terms of the quantum uh, quantum communication. So how these uh, sets are configured, what's the process of configuring, and how it forks from hop to hop and establish end to end communication. It's also a important one. Uh, and the simulation, of course, uh, with so, so many qubits and networks, it comes with the penalty that you really uh, need a lot of memory. And if we want to analyze the qubits in a single entangled state, it, we need a <laughs> exponential uh, memory sizes. Ex we have a exponential growth in terms of the memory which is required to do the simulation. So. It is also an important element. Uh, as I mentioned, QISP is, uh, is heavily developed. There are also elements that are still being uh, analyzed and uh, want to, and the, the authors want to implement. So one of these are uh, the next generation of repeaters currently, repeater graph states, uh, and also internetworking and test and improve matching of physical experiments, APIs for the other elements. We do also have the uh, research element, which comes for, which connect with visualization, how to generate the traffic, the routing protocols, and improve the connection setup, uh, resource allocation, and further improve the rule sets, and especially the process of establishing and the elements connected with the uh, scalability. And from the user perspective, also uh, elements that will allow to uh, more easily work with the simulator. So the graphical and the especially link tomography, which will link topography that can be easily displayed and followed by the, uh, by the user. Uh, the elements that, uh, of course, still needs to be improved are the uh, uh, the changes in the network that result in the collapse of quantum states, uh, protocol design, so uh, approach mm -hmm. like we use in the SDN, and connection architecture, as I mentioned regarding the uh, quantum repeaters architectures and and simply changes, dynamic changes in the network. So the states and the traffic pattern changes. Uh, so uh, we can, uh, you can follow uh, the setup in the references and read all about the elements. And if there are questions I can ask, I can try to answer them right now. And in the meantime, I'll try to show how the simulator works in the real time using the uh, the instance, the machine that I'm using here at the SNC. Uh, so in the meantime, please free to ask questions. I will try to answer them. 
I'm not, of course, the quantum uh, physicist, so some of them may be difficult for me to answer. Thank you, Piotr, uh, for your presentation. So is there any question for Piotr uh, in the meantime when he is preparing his demonstration? Maybe there will be more questions when you start uh, to show the software. Piotr. Yes, okay. Uh, I will show my screen. I think you should see. Yeah, we see it. Uh, no problem. Good. Perfect. Yeah, so, so the basic. Uh, so this is the basic uh, interface of the Omnet, uh, which has two quantum Ethernet simulation package installed. And at the moment, I, I I've loaded some simple. Uh, scenario configuration. We have a number of end nodes that are connected. Uh, some of them are using quantum repeaters to extend the, the length. And the nodes are also interconnected with the quantum repeaters to allow for a, for a more complex uh, configuration. And what you see is uh, um, the process of how the individual qubits are in terms of the, actually these are individual photons. Uh, these are qubits, they are exchanged and sent between the end nodes and the different colors, uh, it uh, reflects the different operation and different state of the link. For example, the, um, uh, the blue, uh, dot on the link represents that the quantum tomography is done over the link. And so the rule set is being established uh, between the end nodes to allow for a, a communication between the nodes. And the actual uh, transmission, you can see the, the red dots that are physical photons that are transmitted. So as you can see, uh, and as I mentioned during the presentation, each node can be configured. Uh, so uh, the size and the uh, the C gate, which is uh, it's connected with the uh, the quantum quantum gates, the quantum operations that are needed to be performed on the gates, uh, in the tomography and before the purification. And as you can see, all the elements can be configured. But as I mentioned, it's not easy. Uh, for something for someone who's uh, new into this to understand it and it, it requires a little bit of time to see but once uh, but once we have a basic knowledge i think uh, we will have a good understanding how the quantum networks and the quantum communication works in principle in, in reality and because in reality it will be more from the functional point of view uh, it will be uh, implemented as we as we see on the simulation. So uh, currently, at, at least what we see from the theoretical works at the moment. Uh, so please free uh, to ask questions if you have. I will try to answer them. Is there any uh, question for, for Piotr? If not, I have. What is the main difference between the routers and, and the. And it's a naive question, sorry, and the repeaters? Because is, is router a kind of. Uh, of rep uh, a collection so, so, of repeaters that is following some rules that is given by the. Uh, by your yeah, protocol? So, yes, yeah, so the quantum, re quantum router, it includes uh, also the quantum repeater. But the main difference is that the quantum repeater is only for point-to-point uh, -point links. So to extend one physical link. And the quantum router, of course, it allows to route different, to route the traffic between different quantum links. So as you can see, the repeater has only uh, two, uh, two links. And the quantum repeaters can have multiple links depending on uh, on the configuration. 
Uh, and does this simulator take in consideration the the state of the of the optical link? Uh, it, uh, yes, because you can you can uh, of course you have to define the speed of uh, propagation of light in the given link. Uh, but this is you can introduce the errors which are which should be corrected during the quantum detected and corrected using the quantum tomography. So you need to have the means to um, to uh, detect and correct all the errors that can influence the purity of your quantum states uh, for your qubits that you want to send. So we need to look at different approach here. Uh, we need to look from the perspective perspective what is influencing the uh, the purity of the quantum states that we need to uh, uh, transmit between the nodes. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Do you would you do you have something else that you want to show us? Or? Uh, it, to be honest, uh, I think this example is fine. So uh, okay, okay. I think if if there are no any other questions. Um, um, yeah, well, uh, we, we can, we can proceed. To proceed. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Piotr, for this uh, simulation uh, presentation. Um, for, to, 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 to end uh, this uh, info share, we would like to ask you just five questions uh, about uh, the usage of these uh, of these uh, tools. Uh, if you want, if you would be kind enough to go to the uh, to a Mentimeter uh, link that I will put on the chat. Uh, where is the chat? Here it is. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here it is. Uh, well, we, we, we have uh, five questions. The first one is, uh, maybe I can share my screen. Okay, don't know if you see my, the Mentimeters. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so the first question is about uh, uh, just have uh, your organization because uh, in Mentimeters uh, it's uh, totally anonymous. <laughs> and so if we, if we would like to, to, to have them, a bit of view of your understanding is of your of your of your answer. It's uh, we we traditionally start with uh, these first questions. So I will let you a couple of minutes to answer. Okay, and after that, uh, okay. Okay, PS and C. It's, it's uh, there is 40 people that is connected. So let's try to reach 20 if possible. <laughs> Two patients here. Okay, uh, maybe we can start with the others. Do you, do you used already uh, a test bed, uh, a quantum test bed on your, in your organization? Uh, 
So there is four people who are using this bed. Doesn't change a lot now. Five. Okay. The next question is about: uh, Would you be interested to use the test bed? Because we we have. Uh, We have now in our PSNC and Cessnet has uh, implemented uh, uh, these two simulation uh, tests, but they have also physical tests. So I wonder if it is uh, interesting to give you access uh, uh, to this uh, simulation test bed and also physical test bed. Okay, it doesn't change, doesn't move at all. And uh, 16, okay, thank you. So I think there is a, a need for this. The next question is uh, more related uh, to uh, uh, if you would be interested by a quantum training. So there is, you can answer, can answer uh, no, of course, but if you want, you can have a, a classical training or a regular training. You, you, you can vote for both of them if you want. Uh, classical training is, uh, as, as usual, for instance, uh, IT, IT uh, training with four days of, uh, of, of, of work. Whereas you, you, you see regular webinar is more something uh, a regular call in the in the room in the, in 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 the weeks and you and you, and we we can uh, we can go through the different uh, things through the different topics that that is interesting to, to go. Okay, uh, I think uh, with this we 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 are we don't see that is moving a lot. So thank you very much for this uh, for this answer. I think that we it's the the last question. Oh no, there is another question that coming from Piotr. So you know that there is uh, QCI, the quantum uh, infrastructure uh, quantum communication infrastructure call from the EC review. Uh, so see, that is a uh, really an important topics for. Uh, 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 European research. There will be two QCI. Piotr, you correct me if I'm saying something wrong. One is a national QCI, and after that, I, what well, the first call will be for the national yes. QCI, and the second one was for the European QCI, which is the interconnection of the of the national QCI. So there is a question of uh, uh, whether the NRENs uh, will be take part into. Uh, into the answer of this call. So, so this is an important topic. Some NRN will be uh, really uh, involved in this and some of those will not be involved. Uh, it will more the university of the research ministry that uh, will cover these activities. Okay, so there is a uh, 14 NRN that uh, plan to be, uh, to be uh, engaged in QCI uh, activities. Okay. Okay. So with this, uh, I think uh, we have finished this meter. Thank you for answering to 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 this uh, survey. Uh, Piotr, do you have anything else? Because you, Piotr or, or, or Rudolf, do you have you want to add something? You are. Uh, yes, maybe from from my side, uh, maybe a. Uh, a question, please free to discuss it. Um, if, if, if you feel that, do we need uh, maybe to organize from your point of view uh, training which is more focused on the physical uh, aspect of the quantum 
uh, quantum networks, the quantum communication, which is also applied for the QQD. Uh, because QPD, of course, is a simple example of the uh, quantum communication in, in many aspects. Uh, but I think the crucial question is, uh, if really there is a need, uh, do you feel it is a need to do the training from the quantum mechanics and the physical aspects that are connected, the basic aspects that are needed to be understand here? Uh, just a free question, please free to comment it or... So, so your question is, before 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 to start it to to implement it, do we need to have a I would say the yes a, a first background scientific background I would say soft but still <laughs> still scientific background to understand better the, the quantum yeah it can be for example it can be included in the uh, the train that I did, that we ask uh, mentioned in the Mentimeter. There is no answer on this. F from my point of view, I, I would say yes, because <laughs> it's obviously a little bit magic quantum things, but uh, for me, but it's my own point of view. So there is, we'd be very handy indeed from Marcel. Thank you for this answer. Okay, I see. Uh, thank you, Marcel, for your comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a kind remind, uh, of course, the, the, the colleagues from SurfNet, they organized a very good webinar earlier uh, in, in, uh, in July about the uh, quant general quantum communication aspect. So, so it's really also helpful. And did they record it? Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm not sure if it's recorded and available. To be honest, I didn't check yet. I did participate, but I'm not sure if it's uh, recorded. Okay. I, I saw I saw that it was recorded, but I'm not sure if it is available. To be honest, I have to check. Okay. Um, Rudolf, do you want to add something because you you help uh, me to, to 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 organize this? No, Rudolf, I don't know if you are there still no okay so uh, just uh, to i put on the chat uh, just uh, you know that there is on the on next friday uh, the counterpart of this uh, info share uh, which is this info share focus on, on simulation the, the 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 counterpart will be uh, qkd implementation physical implementation and physical test bed that will be also uh, that will be presented on next uh, friday so with this if piotr if you don't have anything we can... Uh, yes, uh, so please, uh, I highly uh, invite all of us to invite you to join the, uh, the, the info share on Friday. And we will talk also a little bit more regarding this uh, physical implementation that Miral and Kindly showed in the MS3 slide. So we show the, how actually it is implemented. And there will be also a presentation from Professor uh, André Zuereb, sorry, I don't know if I pronounce correctly, from the uh, University of Malta, who were working at the, at the European uh, Commission, I think so. And there, there will be a, made a presentation about European Quantum Communication Infrastructure called QCI. So yes. maybe, maybe and of course, it. yes, and of course, the, the, the presentation that we missed today, so. Yeah, on the presentation, yes, exactly, about, uh, I would say not exactly an official presentation, but we try to uh, to give you the, the, the basic information of, of the proof of concept that uh, uh, Giant is uh, is uh, working on with Toshiba, uh, uh, trying to establish the QKD between two Giant pops. Okay, with this, uh, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, have a nice uh, week. Bye. Thank you, Xavier. Bye, Xavier. Bye. Bye. Bye.